Hi, this is John from Android Addicts with a quick video showing you how to set up the Panda Gamepad Pro on an Android phone. Once you've downloaded and installed the app, open it up, click Need Activation, and now we're going to activate the app. So to do this, we actually have to enable developer mode on our phone. Now we can do that by going into Settings, click this, the uh, quick link in the app there to jump into it, and then we're going to click Software Information here, we're going to find the build number. Press that seven times. Enter your PIN number. And developer mode is now enabled. So now if you scroll to the bottom of your settings, you should see developer options. And now we're just going to search for USB debugging and turn that on. Now once that's turned on, there is a link in the video description below to the file you need to download for your PC. Plug your phone into your PC when you've downloaded the file, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is download GamepadProActiveTool.ra. I've put a link in the description below. Open that with your uh, compression software. I've got WinZip installed. And then what you're going to want to do is just drag the Gamepad Active Tool folder onto the desktop somewhere, somewhere where you can easily access it. Okay, once that's extracted, open it up, and you'll see inside here there's a file called activate.bat. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold the phone here, what we're going to do is just double click activate.bat and we get a message on the phone here saying allow USB debugging. We're going to click allow always from this computer and press OK. And now we're just going to have a quick look at what the tool is saying here. So it's unable to connect to the uh, device because it's unauthorized. So the first time you run it, it will probably say that message. So let's close the window off. So I'm going to click on the cross here and just run that again. Okay, so this time we get some different messages. Uh, you get these bad messages, but ignore those because uh, they don't seem to actually make a difference. As long as it says OK at the end, what you should see pop up is this dialog box here. So activation finished, please launch Panda app uh, on your phone and check it is activated. So that's great. So what we're going to do now is go back to the Panda gamepad app and we can see here the green tick is activated. So that means the software is now activated and once you connect a device up, I'm just going to connect my uh, GLAP controller here. Once it's connected and it can see the game, uh, sorry, the gamepad, load the game of choice, which in this case is PUBG, and you will see, hopefully, on the screen here, we've got all the different uh, button layout settings configured, and we can now play PUBG with our controller. I'm going to quickly run down the steps required to actually customize the on screen uh, overlay and set up the controls exactly how you wish. So what I'd recommend doing, if you can, go into some kind of training or practice mode in the game that you're going to actually uh, configure. That way you have time to actually you know, mess around with the controls and position them how you wish without getting you know, stressed about actually uh, playing the game. So let me just move away from all these people because they're making a lot of noise. Okay, so I'm just going to move down here. Right, so at the top of your screen, you should see a little panda. It's a bit faint, but you can see a little panda there, and that's basically access to the uh, settings or configuration of the Panda Game Panda app. So what we've got here, we've got the left stick and the right stick. Those are the big circles. It's not quite central, actually, so I'll just make that central. Um, this controls the actual uh, circumference of this circle, so if you're... Uh, game allows you to run, for example, you might want a bigger circle to make sure that it's detecting you pushing fully up. Let me just mute those people. Right, and obviously you've got the right analog stick here, which will do your uh, uh, looking around and direction. So I'm not going to mess around with those too much because they seem to be working quite fine at the moment. But what I will point out here is the other buttons. So you can see there's quite a few buttons here that were already uh, pre-allocated sort of to this game, which I don't really need. So there's LB and down. I'm just going to press the little cross 
Each of these has a little cross on here, which you can press to actually delete it. And then delete those. You can add things back in if you wish, um, and you can change things on the fly. So for example, uh, this X button here, if I wanted the punch that's actually on this side to be, say, I don't know, RB, I select the button. You can see this sort of flashing cursor here. And then I'm gonna just press RB. And it's gonna say that I've already got that assigned, which uh, I have obviously to uh, the position up here, but I'm gonna press OK and I'm just gonna set it anyway. I'm not gonna keep that because obviously it will conflict with what I've already have set up. So I'm gonna just delete that. But you get the idea, that's how you actually change the buttons around. If there's a button missing, for example, uh, we've got an up on the D-pad, we've got a down on the D-pad. We don't have, uh, we've got a left, but we don't have a right on the D-pad that I can see. So for example, I could click on this one here, press right on the D-pad. Okay, it is saying it exists somewhere. I can't, oh, sorry, it's down here. I couldn't see it before, so let's just delete that one. But you get the idea, you can basically um, configure these as you wish. Now you can press and hold like uh, for example, left, uh, left, right, and X, and that will do a right and X, or up and Y, which is already in use, but uh, just just kind of showing you, uh, I might have to actually say, don't remind me again, but I suppose it could be quite helpful to know that you're mapping something that has already been mapped previously. So there's lots of different uh, combinations you can set up, and for example, A, B, you can press any combination of buttons and I'll just try three buttons at the same time. No, so it only does two buttons at the same time. But it's good to know that you can have a combination set up. Now, once I've got mine set up how I wish, I tend to hide the overlay so that it's not on the screen all the time. And basically to do that, you set the button uh, opacity or opacity to hidden. So once it's hidden, and once you've finished configuring things, just press on the little tick up here, everything disappears, and you can carry on and play your game. Click on the panda, and it brings it back up. You click on settings, and you can set all these different settings here. I've got the accurate aiming uh, activated here to reduce the actual speed of my right analog stick whilst I'm holding down the left bumper button or left trigger even. And the other option you get here, you get a single-handed gamepad selection. I've got a uh, dual-handed gamepad, so I'm not adding that. And you can select your current gamepad mode. I've got it obviously set to the gamepad mode, but you can change it if you need to for different games. And the only other option you get here is the uh, option to record your game footage. I haven't used this because I just use the built-in game recorder uh, that comes with Samsung phones, but it could be a handy little thing to have if you uh, wish to record your games. And you also get the option here to actually turn off the overlay because if you want to type something on a keyboard, you must turn off the overlay first to be able to type and get the keyboard up. So don't forget that one, that's that little on off switch up there and turn it back on once you've finished and you're ready to play the game. So I hope you found this video useful. Please leave any comments you have down below and if you have any questions I'll do my best to answer them. Please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. Next video I'm going to do for the GLAP controller is a uh, retro gaming test. To just try to test a few different emulators and see how they perform with the analog and d-pad controls from this controller hopefully it should be okay but uh, i know a few people have requested uh, i test a few emulators so that will be coming next so i hope you have a good day and i will see you in the next video